Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I have a very nice IBM X3850 Model 2 and it's noisy. It has some handles that keeps making noises when I just move a little bit. This IBM server is reasonably cheap on the internet. I have had subscribers getting this for only a couple of hundred bucks and that's a really good price for a server that is this powerful. It's so cheap that many people want to get it instead of other servers because they get a lot more computer processing out of this server than a lot of other stuff that they could get for equal amount of money and you get a really really good server uh, specs wise you get a lot of ram you get very many cores and um, well so i wanted to show you one of these i actually have one more of these i just got one more so um, let's open up and see what we got here on the front here we have a uh, we have some tabs here for getting it out of the rack and we have another blue tab here and another here to take out of the front of the server. Down here we have the ESD and that is for grounding it. You can um, connect your anti-static wristband right there. We have a little CL inside sticker, doesn't really matter. We have a CD, DVD, ROM up here. Nobody uses that anymore. We have two USBs. We have a hard drive. There's only four bays in this server. But this one actually comes equipped with three drives. So these are rather small. These are 73.4 gigabyte drives. So they are good for having your operating system on. Not much more than that. Could maybe put in some bigger uh, SATA drives. I'm not sure. I haven't tried that, really. Um, next to that, there is the light panel thing here, light panel diagnostics. And this will show you if there's something wrong with the server. Well, it doesn't show anything right now. We have the power on uh, button right there. No power to it. And that can be protected by this little thing that goes forth and back. And next to that, we have some light diodes. Mm, we have the little light tower here that makes a blue light diode uh, turn on on the back of the server as well. Not much else here. We have the model number down here, so that's good. That's the front of the server. Let's go to the back of it. On the back of the server, we have some expansion cards here. And there's actually some HBAs in this server fiber optic to your SAN connection things. There's four of those, four gigabit cards. Two cards missing. I think there has been network cards on those. Uh, then we have, oh, there is seven bays down here for expansion cards. You see that? Yeah, seven bays right there. So you can put a lot of stuff in this. Unfortunately, it's pretty hard to put in a graphics card because it, all these bays are only PCI Express X8 and graphics cards usually use PCI X16, right? So too bad. And they're only 25 watts each. So they can't really use a lot of power. Next to that, we have a serial connection. We have a s external SAS attachment so you can put on some external storage. We have three USB 2 connections. We have two network cards, gigabit connections. Then we have the ASM adapter up here. Usually we just use the network connection and the monitor if we need to connect the monitor to the server. That's usable. The other connections I've never seen used for anything. I do actually think that I made a video where I found out that these weren't you couldn't really use them for anything. They were meant for if this card goes in another, if this card goes into another server. And then we have two power supplies over here, and these are very powerful power supplies. I do think I remember them being. Well, they can draw a lot of watts. Let's put that back in, and of course they are redundant. And this model you can't really get with. Uh, without two power supplies. Down here we have some link options and I do believe that this server can be attached to other servers like it so that 
these servers can talk together as one server so you can link more servers together that way on top of the server we have the usual nice drawing of what's going on inside there's a lot of helpful information on these servers like how to take out the fan assembly and how to put in expansion cards and fans and hard drives and the memory cartridges are over here there's an overview of the system board here what everything is on the system board so you can pick something and see what it is there is the rate controller battery assembly over here uh, more information online parts for this common uh, spare parts things that might break you might need another one and here is the light diagnostic panel um, and a nice explanation of what's going on when there is a light diode that lights up here if the sp lights up you can go up here and you can find sp uh, right there service processor error reset rsa2 update bias firmware they have even have some suggestions to what you can do to try and solve this so um, if you have a problem with a server like this be sure to read the case <laughs> weird right read the case so let's go in and well, they have this nice opening system like that and you can just take off the cover then this is what the server looks like inside down here we have the memory on each side underneath here we have some we have two processors over here we have another two processors here we have the fans in the middle of the server so you can kind of say they're both sucking and they're pushing the air through the server because it's of course blowing that way all servers are behind here we have the expansion cards power supply the rsa adapter and down here we have some connections this server has some memory cartridges that works kind of like this you pull them up and you have eight memory slots in each of them that brings the server up to a total of 32 slots for memory and let's just see these are four gigabytes so there's 32 gigabytes in each of these and that brings this server up to 128 gigabytes of ram it even has a little switch up here so it knows that when when it's out of there it, it can feel that um, if there's an error on this board there is also a little battery down here and you can press this little button and if there is an error on one of the dims it will light up uh, where are the leds i guess they don't really have individual leds can't find them anyway um, but it has some leds up here so the memory cartridge can tell how it's doing kind of there is a little explanation here and apparently you can hot swap one of these so when you open up the lever it will disable the memory mm, i would never do that that the server has to be doing some damn important stuff to hot swap a memory cartridge like this not just uh, shut down the server and exchange it uh, recently i had an error on a server like this and one of the memory blocks said that it was bad so i got ibm to send me another memory block and they did and i went to the server and i exchanged it and nothing happened it still made an error and i could take the memory block and put it in one of these cartridges and i could swap out the cartridges and it would still say that um, the cartridges in this position was broken even though i put in another cartridges and that's because inside of the bias you have if there is a memory error you need to go in there and reset that error and tell it that the memory block is now good again that i didn't really know so i had a lot of trouble with that i'm sharing that with you so you don't need to make that stupid mistake but well 128 gigabytes in this server i do believe that it is able to handle 256 gigabytes to open this up to see a little better inside we can release the front plate here and underneath that there is a couple of screws down here i have already loosened those and there's a handle 
and um, the first time I had to have a peek inside of this, I couldn't get this open. Not this server, another one, but this was stuck really good and I could get it like to here and it wouldn't botch any further. So I thought that I was doing something wrong, but up here, uh, just on top of it, there's actually a very nice explanation on how to do this. But um, it's more or less release the screws and pull it up. And just use a bit of force. There is like something over here that prevents it from being loose. So it won't drop down again. That's actually not a bad thing. Now we get a very good look at the four processors. In this particular server, there is four six core CPUs and they're all 2.4 gigahertz. This server is not a, it does not do hyper threading. So all of these are only six cores CPUs. If they had hyper threading, they would be with 12 threads, but they don't. So in the server, there's 24 cores, which is actually not bad at all. 24 cores, 128 gigs of RAM, not bad at all. This server can be changed so that it can be put together with other servers. And down here is a little slot for an X scaler, something that IBM has invented. So you can put in some, probably just a license key. And with that, you can scale this server up and have four servers working together as one server. So that brings you up to a total of 16 processors. 96 cores so that would be awesome next to it is these power regulators for the processors there is four of those they are sitting in in holders here and you can pull them up with a bit of force if you have one of these servers and it only has two processors when you buy the two next processors you need to remember to get the these are called vrm voltage regulating modules and you need to get those together with the processor so I'm just gonna be putting that in and it's it's meant for you can reach it even though you don't have to put every, take everything apart you can still get this out like that so well when this is up we can also get rid of the fans and there is two blue levels here on each side so you can take up the fan assembly like this it's a very nice assembly and that way we can see a bit more of the system board over here it's not really very interesting there's not much there uh, here are the connections if we were to connect this server to other servers and make it a scalable server getting up to the 94 cores and 24 cpus one terabyte of ram with those four servers be able to do over here are the three connections that can be used to connect this server to three other servers just like it this server is actually more or less the ibm x3850 x4 they didn't call it that they call it the model 2 but um, really it's the x4 i have an x39 x3 out at my little data center but they didn't call it that either but they could have the next model of this server was called the x5 and that was and that was very similar to this uh, there's another thing here we can take out we just need to pop out the, the power supplies first just retract them a little and there is kind of a power module here that can go up see that there's not much to see here is just a lot of connections the connection from the power supplies comes in here um, there is some magic happening here can't really see what's going on underneath here and they don't want me to they have very wisely prevented me from that and I do not want to take this apart but well that comes up and what comes up goes down again and the power supplies slides back into it it's a very neat design actually and that handle over there keeps making noises 
Zoom. Let's pop in the fans again. Hmm, that wasn't too easy. Pop this one down as well. In the back here, we have all the expansion cards, but up here is actually a drawing that explains how to take those, those things apart, taking out this power black plane, as they call it, and they call that a release handle. And there is how you need to take out the power supplies first. And the, the blue stuff here is not hot pluggable, the orange stuff is. Yeah, and over here is a drawing that tells you what the LEDs on the power supply behind of the server, what those means. Very nice. And down here we have the expansion cards and this yeah, stays right there if I persuade it enough. Down here we have the seven expansion cards. And the last little thing over here is actually the ray controller sitting in there. We see the battery holder. This is the battery for the for the rate controller. It has a, has a place for it there. And these expansion cards, they're only PCI Express times eight. And I was actually playing around with the thought of trying to convert those. If I wanted to put in a graphics card in a server like this, not really like this, but something like this. So I bought this China thing and it fits very nicely down there. that so I could have a graphics card in there having having gotten further than this but well that could be an option I would not be able to use the graphics card in VMware because it will not be able to pass through the graphics cards to the virtual environment because the processors are not able to use the Intel virtualization technology for directed IO and that is needed for, for example, VMware to use a graphics card in this server. And this server or these processors actually does not have that technology, so it cannot be used. What a shame. It would be pretty awesome with this server and four graphics cards or something like that. That would be awesome. Over here is the RSA2 adapter. I think the server comes as standard with this adapter. You can't even get it without because you can't connect the monitor if this card is not in the server. So that is standard and you don't have to pay extra or anything and you want this card. It's pretty awesome. There's a bunch of cables. Most of these goes up to the front. There is some USB cables and power cables. Some this is the this is the disk drive cable or the back plane of the hard drives up there. There is the CMOS battery down there. The server is able to boot from a USB stick and that is right down there. And it's a bit hard to see. Here is the USB stick for booting. And everything is very nicely marked down here. They, they really, they've done a really good job on, on that. This little card that has the same size of a memory slot is actually part of the rate controller. Not totally sure what this model is yet, but it's probably an MR10 MRK. So that uh, fits down here. And that's the thing that has the battery attached to it. And that's um, to prevent data loss. There we are. Down here, oh, if we just move this for a little bit. We have a SATA connector. This is actually for the CD-ROM drive. There's a SATA connector there. And down here is the power plug for it. Like this one. And this looks exactly like the sound connection for a DVD drive, CD drive, the old ones. Uh, but you can actually power something with that. And I showed how to make a, a connector for that in one of my earlier videos on the X3650 model one. So with a little soldering and stuff, you could actually put in a SATA drive in this server. The connection goes up here, right there. Don't know if this could just be plugged into some hard drive, but well, it goes up there. In here, there is actually a couple of PCI slots that are hot pluggable. And they have this little red lever 
that you have to push to get it out and I'm pretty sure that is because it needs to tell the operating system and the server that this card is about to be taken out of the server so when you when you push this there will be there's a switch down here that uh, is connected and it knows that this card is um, well it probably disables that card and you can take it out and exchange it for something else but if you want to exchange it it's probably already broken I would never use that option. Also a little connector thing here that goes out to three LEDs on the back here. So we didn't talk about those. That shows if the server is powered on, the light tower is there, and if there is some kind of an error on the server. So when should you get a server like this? Well, when it's dirt cheap you should get a server like this. It uses a lot of power. I do think that a server like this is somewhere between 500 and 600 watts and that's when it's not doing too much. So if you want a server that has to run 24-7 in a small apartment or in your room, this is not the server to get. If you want a server to make big calculations and just, this is great for databases like SQL or all the databases, mostly databases that is like freeware because if you have to buy a license for like SQL and this server, it, it's much cheaper to get a newer server. You could, you could do what this server is doing with one processor and you would save a lot of money. SQL licenses is definitely not cheap. So if you MySQL, sure. This has been seen really, really, really cheap. So um, when you're comparing server equipment, it's a really good deal to get a server with 128 gigabytes of RAM, 24 cores and expansion cards and stuff. But, um, well, you have to look at what you're gonna be needing this server for and where it's gonna be sitting and how much power you're willing to put into it. If this is just a test server that you start every weekend, like I usually do, um, it's okay that it uses a little power, but if it has to run all the time, well, it's a drain on your wallet. It's a good server, no doubt about it. It can do a lot of good stuff for you. But uh, look into what you really want to do with a server like this before you uh, run out and get it. Because it's a good server, but it has its downsides too. It's heavy as hell too. Did I mention that? It's heavy as hell. Thank you for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.